Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. Today we are talking backups. Now, to most people, backups are a mind-numbingly boring subject that can elicit sheer terror when they are not present or don't work. Most people that have used computers for any amount of time encounter an Alt-Shift moment when they accidentally delete important information or a system update puts their system into an unstable or unusable state. In this video, we're going to make a copy of our root file system. We will go over a couple of ways to do that. One using a little script I wrote using rsync as the base. rsync is a Linux utility to backup and archive data. And then we'll take a look at back in time, which is a GUI interface to rsync and provides an easy interface to many of the more advanced rsync features. Before we start our backup, let's take a look at our disk layout on a Jetson. We'll open our disks application. For this video, I'm using a Jetson Xavier NX developer kit. You can see that we have a 500 gigabyte disk. This is connected to the M2 key M slot of the Xavier. We have an SD card reader. That's where we are running our system from. And we have a 256 gigabyte disk. That's connected to SDA, which is the USB port. The root FS of this particular system is on the SD card reader. Everything runs strictly off the SD card reader. I've been doing a little bit of development on the Jetson kernel on this machine. You can see that the SD card reader has several partitions. This large partition here at the end is called the app partition. That's where our root FS is stored. Let's take a look at that from the command line. Here it is down here. We can see that there are 11 partitions. Each partition has a name, kernel, Here's where the device trees are stored, has recovery partitions. And then down here, we have the app partition. Most Linux systems only have one partition that the root FS is in. The multiple partitions of the Jetson make it a little bit more difficult to back up the whole system. This disk layout is typical of all of the Jetsons. A Jetson system boots from the eMMC or the SD card depending on the model. Let's close this up. If we go up a level from our home directory, here's the rest of our system. We refer to this as the root directory. It's denoted by this slash here. We are going to save everything here. We save everything here in the root folder with the exception of temporary files and transitional system files. You can take a look at the script to see which directories we leave out. Feel free to add and subtract for your needs. Because this is a recursive descent through all the directories on the system, we also need to exclude directories which lead to other drives either locally or on the network. Certainly we need to avoid the area on the drive where we are making the backup to avoid the infinite loop of making a backup of the backup area. That would end up being an inception type of nightmare <laughs> that will eventually fill up the backup drive. That's no good. Let's get ready to backup our Jetson. On the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub, there is a repository named Backup Jetson. Let's grab the address. Let's clone that repository. And then we switch over to that repository's directory. Let's create a folder where we want to place our backup. I have a USB drive connected to the Jetson where I want to make my backup. The drive has been formatted ext4. It's called Nano Prince. It's also been partitioned. Let's wander over to where I want to put my backup folder. And let's create a new folder. How about Xavier NX Backups? 
there it is. Now we are ready to start our backup. Minus D and then the directory name. We'll just drag the directory name over here. Hit enter. It says please make sure you have enough space to create the backup copy. That sounds like a good idea. Let's check the properties of this disk. Hmm, 137 GB is free. That's enough. This method of backup will take up the amount of space that is being used by the root FS. Even though this is a 64 gigabyte SD card, only 14 gigabytes is in use. So we need 14 gigabytes, give or take, available on the backup drive. Here at Jetson Hacks World Headquarters, we have a eight terabyte USB drive for backups. I will leave a link in the description below. Let's start our backup. Continue. Yes, please. Let's check out our backup. There it is. Now, any fool knows that you do not have a backup unless you can also restore from the backup. Let's delete some data and then we will try to restore it. On the SD card, there is a copy of the kernel source. We are going to wander over to that directory. You can see the source directories. Let's hop up a level. And now we delete the source. We need sudo here because it's in a system area. Password. And off it goes, wreaking havoc. Let's take a listing of the directory. It is gone forever. Well, I'm a gonna bring it back. Restore root FS minus D, and then we'll drag this over. That represents the name of our backup directory. That looks about right. Continue. Yes, please. You can see that our kernel folder is back. Its directories are here and all is right with the world again. The back in time application puts a GUI, 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 around rsync and allows easier access to many of rsync's features. Plus, using back in time, you can schedule your backups. Let's search for back in time in our apt repository. We want to install back in time dash QT4. Do you want to continue? Yes, please. Oh boy, let's run it. We want to use the root version of back in time because we are backing up system directories. Password. Authenticate. Back in time is not configured. No. We need to tell back in time where we want to save our snapshots. We'll wander back over to Nano Prints. It's in this media folder. Now let's find our backup directory. Here it is, Xavier NX Backups. Let's choose this directory. Now we go over to the Include tab. Let's add a folder. We want the root directory. And we will choose it. Now we go to the Exclude tab. We want to exclude the mount point for the drives.
Let's add the media folder and the mount folder to our exclude list. Here they are. Let's go to the options tab. We are going to use checksum to detect changes. And finally, we go to the expert options. We want to preserve ACLs because we like our knees. That might mean something else in this context. And then we hit OK. Now that everything is set up, we are ready to take our snapshot. Backup complete. Now we would go through the same process here where we do a restore on some data that we have removed. I'm going to leave that as an exercise for the viewer. The nice thing about back in time is that it makes it easy to schedule your backups. It does this by doing a cron job in the background. Very useful. Definitely something worth checking out. Now that you've made your backups, there's something else you need to remember. It's called the 321 rule. That gets broken down into three parts. One, keep three copies of your data. You have the production version and two other copies. Two, the second rule is to keep them on different types of media. The data is less likely to be corrupted if it's on two different types of storage. Three, and then the third rule is to keep one copy of the data off site. That's in case you have something like a fire. Don't say that word. If you have something like a natural disaster of some sort, you don't want all of the data to be in one place. That's relatively easy now that we can do cloud backups. These are the steps to make your data physically safe. Remember that the physical safety of the data is different than what we usually think about as computer security with encrypted data and such. This is the most bare bones way of backing up your data. You will want to study a little bit and see what fits your particular modus operandi. That's a big word, I like that. I wrote a little article that goes along with this video, so you should take a look through that. It's in a link in the description below. I want to share something with you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, please subscribe. Oh, and stay safe. He has his face mask covering on. <laughs> Thanks for watching.